All right, hello and welcome back. This is the day 11 lesson on inverses of log functions. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, it says that the inverse of an exponential function is a logarithmic function, and the inverse of a log function is an exponential function. Here we have the steps to finding the inverse of a log or an exponential function. To find the inverse of an exponential function, step zero is to change the f of x to y, and step one is to switch your x and y. Step two, isolate your exponential term. Step three, rewrite the equation in log form. Step four, isolate your y, and step five is to change y to f inverse of x. So here we have a function, and we're just going to go through this process. The function is 4 to the x minus 3 plus 1. We see that it is an exponential. So step 0 is to change the f of x to y, and that's what we did here. Step 2 is to switch your x and y. So we change the y to x, and we change this x to y. Step two is to isolate your exponential term. To do that, we'll need to subtract one from both sides. Now we have x minus one is equal to four raised to the y minus three. So this exponential term is now isolated. All right, after we isolate, we go to step three, which is to rewrite the equation in log form. So we always start with the base of four, so that would be log base four of x minus 1 equals y minus 3. And that's what we have on this line. Okay, and then step 4 is to isolate the y. So to isolate y, we would add 3 to both sides. So now we have y is equal to log base 4 of x minus 1 plus 3. And then step 5 is to change the y back to f inverse of x. So f inverse of x is log base 4 of x minus 1 plus 3. All right, so let's go through these steps with example 1. So we have r of x is equal to 5 raised to the x minus 1 plus 2. Step 0 is to change the f of x to y. And that's what we have here. So y is 5 raised to the x minus 1 plus 2. Step two, I'm sorry, step one, we switch the x and y. So x is equal to five raised to the y minus one plus two. Step two is to isolate the exponential term. We isolate the exponential term by subtracting two from both sides. And so we have x minus two equals five raised to the y minus one. Step three is to rewrite the equation in log form. So that would be log base 5 of x minus 2 equals y minus 1. Step 4 is to isolate the y. To isolate the y, we'll need to add 1 to both sides. So we have log base 5 of x minus 2 plus 1 is equal to y. And then step 5 is to change the y back to the inverse. So in this case, it's r inverse of x equals log base 5 of x minus 2 plus 1. All right, let's apply these steps with example 2. We start with r of x equals 3 times 10 raised to the 4x minus 1. In step 0, we replace the r of x with y. And then in step 1, we switch the x and y. So we have x equals 3 times 10 to the 4y minus 1. Then in step two, we isolate the exponential term. To do that, we'll need to divide by three on both sides. And so we get x divided by three equals 10 raised to the four y minus one. And then in step three, we're gonna write this in log form. So that's gonna be log base 10 of x over three equals four y minus one. Now, of course, we know log base 10 is just a common log, so we drop the 10. So it's just log x over 3 equals 4y minus 1. Now, in step 4, we're going to isolate the y. 
So the first step in isolating the Y would be to add one to both sides. And so we have log of x over three plus one equals four y. But then we would have to divide by four everywhere. So that would be log of x over three plus one all divided by four equals y. And then in step five, we change the y back to the inverse form. So that would be inverse of r equals log x over three plus one all over four. All right, here is practice number one. We're finding the inverse of this function. So we have r of x is two times eight to the x minus one plus two. And in step zero, we go ahead and change the r of x to y. And in step one, we're gonna switch the x and y. So now we have x is equal to two times eight raised to the y minus one plus two. Then in step two, we need to isolate the exponential term. So to do that, we'll subtract two from both sides first. And then we have to get rid of the two here, so we'll end up dividing by two on both sides. And that gives us x minus two over two equals eight raised to the y minus one. And in step three, we write this in log form. So that would be log base eight of x minus two over two equals y minus one. Now in step four, we're gonna isolate the y. So to isolate this y, we would need to add positive one to both sides. And we get log base eight of x minus two over two plus one equals y. And then our final step, step five, is to change the y back to its inverse form. So that would be the inverse of r equals log base eight of x minus two over two plus one. All right, continuing with number two. Step zero is to change the f of x to y. So we have y equals e to the two x minus nine. And then step one is to switch the x and y. So we have x equals e to the two y minus nine. And step three is we're going to isolate the x and y. I'm sorry, step two is isolate the x and y. So that means we would subtract or add nine to both sides. So adding nine to both sides, we get x plus nine equals e to the two y. And now step three is to rewrite in log form. So that would be log base e of x plus nine equals two y. But we know that log base e is natural log. So we write that as natural log or ln of x plus nine equals two y. All right, step four is to isolate the y. So to isolate the y, we'd need to divide by two on both sides. So that's natural log x plus nine all divided by two equals y. And the fifth step is to change the y back to inverse form. So we have r inverse is natural log of x plus nine all divided by two. Right, in this next example, we're switching things up a bit. Here we're starting with a log function and we're gonna convert it into an exponential function because the inverse of a log function is an exponential function. So we start with g of x equals the natural log of x plus two. We can use these five steps here to convert from log into exponent. So the first step, or step zero, would be to change the g of x to y, which is what we do here. So y equals the natural log of x plus one, or x plus two. And then step one is we switch the x and y. So the y becomes x, and the x becomes y. Then in step two, we isolate the log term. Well, in this case, the natural log is already isolated, so that step is already done. Then in step three, we would rewrite the equation in exponential form. Now, we know that the natural log is actually log base e, so that would be converted to e raised to the power of x equals y plus two, and that's what we have here. All right, and then in step four, we isolate the y, so to isolate the y, we would subtract two from both sides. And we'll get e to the x minus two equals y. 
and then now that we have the y isolated we can simply change the y back to its inverse form so that is the inverse of g equals e to the x minus 2 alright so let's practice these steps with example 3 we have f of x is 3 times log base 6 of x plus 4 and in step 0 we change the f of x to y so y equals 3 log base 6 of x plus 4 step 1 let's switch the x and y so y becomes x and this x becomes y then in step 2 we're going to isolate the log term so to isolate the log term we would have to divide by this 3 on both sides so that's x divided by 3 equals log base 6 of y plus 4 and now in step 3 we're going to rewrite the equation in exponential form and so that's going to be base of 6 is going to be raised to the power of x my, uh, x divided by 3 and it's going to equal y plus 4 so there we have it we have 6 raised to the x over 3 equals y plus 4 and now step 4 is to isolate the y so to isolate the y we would subtract 4 from both sides and that result is 6 raised to the x over 3 minus 4 equals y and then our last step step 5 is to change the y back to its inverse form so here we have f inverse equals 6 to the x over 3 minus 4 alright same thing with example 4 we start with t to the x or t of x is 6 times the natural log of x minus 2 and in step 0 we're changing the t of x to y and in step 1 we're switching the x and y so y becomes x and x becomes y in step 2 we're isolating the log term so we have to do that in two steps first we'll add 2 to both sides and we get x plus 2 equals 6 times the natural log of y then we'll need to divide by the 6 on both sides so we have x plus 2 all divided by 6 equals the natural log of y in step 3 we're re rewriting it in exponential form we know log the natural log is log base e so that's e raised to the x plus 2 over 6 equals y then in step 4 we isolate y so step 4 is actually already done for us it's already isolated so it stays the same and then in step 5 we change the y back to its inverse so we write it as inverse of t equals e to the x plus 2 over 6 alright here's practice number 3 find the inverse of m of x equals log base one half of x plus four alright in step zero we are changing the m of x to y so y equals log base one half of x plus four and then in step one the y changes to x and the x changes to y in step two we are isolating the log term that means we would need to subtract 4 from both sides and we get x minus 4 equals log base 1 half of y alright in step 3 we are getting the y by itself we're isolating the y by writing this in exponential form so writing it in exponential form we have 1 half raised to the x minus 4 equals y Right. In step 4 it says to get y by itself which is actually going to be the exact same expression no change there and then we come to step 5 and that is to change the y back to its inverse form and so we have the inverse of m equals 1 half to the x minus 4 alright and here's number 4 we have g of x equals the negative of the natural log of 5x minus 1 and of course in step 0 we're changing the g of x to y and the next we're going to switch the x and y so y becomes x and x becomes y 
and now we want to get the uh, natural log by itself. So the first thing we'll do is add 1 to both sides. That gives us x plus 1 equals the negative of the natural log. And now we'll need to divide by negative 1 on both sides. And so the x plus 1 becomes negative x minus 1 equals the natural log. Now we're going to convert this into exponent form. So we know that natural log is log base e. So we write it as e to the negative x minus 1 equals 5y. Now in step 4, we need to get the y by itself. So we'll just divide by 5 on both sides. So e to the negative x minus 1 all over 5 equals y. And the last step is to change the y back to its inverse form. So the inverse of g is e to the negative x minus 1 all divided by 5. All right, now for questions 5 and 6, it says to graph the following functions and their inverses on the same coordinate plane. So for number 5, we have y equals log base 3 of x. And we know that when we graph logs, we convert them into exponential form first. So y equals log base 3 of x would convert into 3 raised to the power of y equals x. Now we'll create a table. We want x, y, and the a, y columns. Now we know that when we have an exponential, we always choose the exponents first. So that means we're choosing our y values first here. And traditionally, we go from negative 3 to 3. And now 3 to the negative third is 1 27th. 3 to the negative second is 1 9th. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third, and so on. And so we have these x coordinates. All right, let's go ahead and graph these points along with the vertical asymptote. So here we have our vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And these are the points and the curve going through the points. All right, that is the graph of log base 3 of x. Now to graph its inverse, all we do is we take this table and reverse the x's and the y's. So the y column becomes the x column, and the x column would become the y column. And then we have this. So this is the inverse. All right, x column, the y column here became the x column, and the x column of the original becomes the y column. All right, now let's go ahead and graph that. And when we graph this, it produces this red curve, along with its horizontal asymptote. All right, and that is done. As we know, this red curve is an exponential curve, whereas the blue curve is a logarithmic curve. All right, now we're graphing y equals negative 3 times the log base 1 half of x plus 2. First, we want to graph the parent curve. And the parent curve is just going to be y equals log base 1 half of x. Let's convert that into an exponent and that would be 1 half raised to the power of y equals x. And then let's do our table. We'll choose our y values first, going from negative 3 to 3, and plugging in negative 3 for y. That's 1 half raised to the negative 3 is actually going to be 8. And then 1 half to the negative 2 is going to be 4. And 1 half to the negative 1 is going to be 2, and so on. So we produce these x values from 8 to 4 to 2, 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, and 1 eighth. Now, this also has a coefficient of negative 3. So we do have to complete the a times y column. What we'll do is we'll take all of these y values and multiply them by the coefficient of negative 3. So negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 and negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, and so on. So we produce these a times y values from 9 to negative 9. Now let's look at the transformation. 
In the transformation, we have x plus 2, which means the graph has moved to the left two units. So before we graph this, we want to graph the curve that is moved to the left two units. So that means that all of the x values will get moved to the left. We do that by subtracting 2 from each of the x values. So it's going to produce the following table. 8 minus 2 is 6, so that becomes the new x value after the transformation. 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, and so on. So all of these x values represent the graph shifting to the left two units. Now all of the y values are going to stay the same. So this ay column is the same as the ay column from the original curve. Now let's go ahead and plot the points. And we see that um, we'll have a vertical asymptote at negative 2 instead of at 0. And all of the original points over here had been moved to the left. So this is the function before we end up graphing the inverse of it. All right, now let's do the inverse of this function. Well, what we'll do is we'll take these coordinates and just reverse them. So the x column becomes the y column, and this ay column will become the x column. And so 6, 9 becomes 9, 6. 2, 6 becomes 6, 2, and so on. And now we just take these points and plot them, and we have this red graph. You'll notice that this is an exponential curve, and it has a horizontal asymptote. All right, that is the complete graph. And finally, question 7. It says, give the following information for the original graph and its inverse in problem number 6. So we're referring to this graph here. Now the original graph is the blue curve along with the blue vertical asymptote. So for the original graph, what is the end behavior? Well, as x approaches the vertical asymptote, which is at negative 2, the y values are going down towards negative infinity. And then towards the right, as we go to the right, x approaches infinity, and y is also approaching infinity. Uh, the x-intercept, we see the graph crosses the x-axis at negative 1, 0. It does have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. And the domain goes from negative 2 to infinity while the range is going from negative infinity to infinity. Now how about the inverse graph? The inverse graph is the red curve. Its end behavior is as x approaches negative infinity, the y values are leveling off at negative 2. So as x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching negative 2. And then, on the right side, as x approaches positive infinity, the y values are going up towards positive infinity as well. There is a y-intercept at 0, comma, negative 1 here. There is a horizontal asymptote, and that is at y equals negative 2. And the domain is negative infinity to infinity, while the range goes from negative 2 to infinity. All right, and that completes this lesson on inverses of log graphs and exponential graphs.